Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Chris Jones and you're watching the world's worst fishing. Thanks so much for being here. Got the six inches laid out. We're about to run a bunch of shads and uh, right after that we'll meet you back maybe show you a few of them and then we have some exciting new things coming from Jetson Lure Eyes ah, to our signature series collection of eyes. So we'll take a look at a couple of those and then we will get on with the program. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you'll enjoy this video and we'll meet you right back. A brand spanking new bucket of tube plastic. Just popped the lid for the first time. Look at that. Five gallons of opportunity. What will we do with it? Gonna give it a quick mix in here. It's always cool to see the resin come to the top for the very first time. This drill's a little, little weak today. I need to charge it up. But watch this. I love it. Here it comes. There it is. Look at that. Boom. It's like a resin takeover. So these are what we are calling the textured eyes. And these will be part of, um, part of the, uh, the signature series. So snake A. So this is a snake eye. Check these out, yeah, snake B. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm basically just taking one and I'm, I'm just putting it on a mold and just allowing some natural light to flow into the shop. So I have all of my um, uh, shop lights off and that natural light allows me to get a really clear photo. So I'll, uh, I'll show you here, there it is on the phone. Isn't that cool? We can get way in there. Yeah, so just taking a few images, and uh, I mean, just look at these effects. I cannot wait to see what all the bait makers uh, can do with these once those hit. Again, this is going to be a part of the World's Worst Fishing Signature Series Collection Eyes from Jets and Lure Company. So here's how out of touch I've been lately, just between everything going on at the house, being sick. There's literally a tropical storm coming to Tallahassee tonight that I found out about this afternoon. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, there it is. There, there's me under the uh, watch here. So things might get interesting this evening over here at the World's Worst Fishing House. Wish us luck. Well, it's the morning after and I slept through the tropical storm. <clears throat> so I guess it happened. I'll have to uh, go look at the radar history, but a slice of that tree right there is still dry, which means we didn't get uh, a, just a ton, ton, ton of rain. See, there's a branch about to fall, so need to do a little work on that tree. Definitely got a little wind, though. Lots of little pieces down from, uh, from all the pine trees on the property, but this really, really is not bad. All right, want to show y'all a few things that we've been working on. Some exciting, exciting swim bait pours, and then we're going to get down to some business. This is what I like to call scuppernog shad, because the top pigment <clears throat> is scuppernog. Little chartreuse line there, nice little shad dot. Really, really attractive natural shad color. And then we have the opposite end of the spectrum, a super blingy sort of clear clear lake trout and uh, that's using that sparkle flake so that it kind of looks hologram but it's actually that sparkle stuff so yeah really really digging that super bright super fun we did 12 of those 12 of the scupper nogs and then here is one that i am very excited about i've only been pouring this one for about a month now and what i like about it is that hidden bloodline. You see that blue highlight bloodline there that's kind of hidden. You only see it from a certain angle, which is why we like highlight. I mean, that's, that's what makes highlight so fun is that you only really catch it every now and then. And then you have that gold line too. So this is a four layer laminate. You have a white pearl belly, then you have that blue highlight line, then the gold line, and then sort of this brown top with that gold flake to complement that gold line. So I don't really have a name for this one, but three really, really good uh, pours that we've been working on. 
and uh, yeah, thought those were worth showing you guys. All right, now it's time to make some stuff. So I was thinking about it uh, either yesterday or the day before. Um, now anyone who um, has followed uh, this channel for a long time knows that I love fishing frogs. Part of that is because of the type of water that I have access to. So here in Tallahassee, we have what are called like eutrophic prairie lakes. They're real shallow and they're just absolutely covered in lily pads, just covered in lily pads. So one of the best things to throw is any sort of topwater frog or uh, maybe a swim jig or something that you can really get weedless and really work it through those thick pads. And you know, years ago I had a custom frog mold made when I first started. Uh, oh, I don't have the logo up there anymore. Well, when I first started Land is the Limit, there it is, it's on this side. Um, new banner. So anyway, whenever I first started my bait company, I had a custom frog mold made. It's still my favorite frog that I've ever thrown and uh, we're really gonna test it out today. We're also going to be uh, shooting the AI Atomic Toad, but I wanted to make a really like realistic, a really good attempt at a natural bullfrog color. And what better way to do that than to use the triple injector. So let's see what we can do. So we're gonna be running the Dead On Plastics Black Bucket uh, Tube Blend today, the Craw Tube Blend, which is a medium hard durometer. Uh, I really want a frog to be made out of super firm, super tough plastic because of the type of cover that you throw it in. Uh, so anyone that wants to get into making their own plastics, if you do want to make something like a frog or a, a swim jig trailer or something that's really gonna get thrown in the slop, uh, definitely check out like a medium hard durometer for your plastic. And of course, we recommend dead on plastics here. All right, have the plastic cooked up and now we're just gonna start with some green pumpkin. The top color is gonna be the far right. That's how the uh, molds are sort of um, uh, set up. Okay, that's the orientation. Man, I love that green pumpkin right there but we want to darken it and brown it up with some regular brown. Okay, that'll darken it up and brown it up quite a bit. Yeah. You know, being that this is gonna be a triple laminate injection color, I am gonna need some pretty good saturation on these. You know, all three colors are gonna need to be, need to be mixed pretty thick. But yeah, sort of a sort of a nice dark chocolate, basically, is what I'm thinking. Let me uh, drizzle some of that out on the table, just to kind of see how the saturation is. Yeah, I, I'm liking that. It just needs to be a little bit thicker. So some more green pumpkin. We'll start with that. Okay, because that'll thicken it up, and then another another drop of black to darken it. Don't want to go go too much on it though. Then of course some black flake. I like the square cut stuff. You can barely read it, but uh, square cut glitter has. Why can I never find the spoon? Here we go. Square cut glitter, particularly the black glitter, has become like my go-to. It's my absolute favorite little texture flake. I always say that adding black flake is like putting pepper on your food. Just a little bit of seasoning for effect. Maybe just a smidge more. Okay, <laughs> I actually put the spoon in the plastic. All right, so I'm liking that. I'm liking the brown. I think we're gonna keep it as is. Now for the middle color, I wanna start with a watermelon base. This is gonna be a, a much brighter green, of course. And we're actually going to brighten it even further, mixing it with some chartreuse, which I think will give it almost, you know, kind of a nice yellowy effect because we really want some good contrast. Ooh, this plastic needs to be reheated. This is actually the toughest part of doing triple laminates. It's just kind of maintaining three cups of plastic, getting them all to an even temp, getting all the colors mixed in you know, kind of at the same time, maybe a little bit thicker on the watermelon. And then here we go. Now we're gonna really change it up with some chartreuse. See where that gets us. Yeah. 
Oh, that's looking bullfroggy. Is that a word? Yeah, that. Oh yeah, I like where that's going. That, my friend, is looking bullfroggy. We're gonna brighten it even more. And then we're probably gonna need to go ahead and reheat this cup. So that is getting mighty thick. But you can kind of see where we're going with things. All right, so here's what we have. We, uh, we went ahead and just did the white off screen. It was just a couple drops of white and, um, a, couple dro and uh, a little bit of white pearl powder. So now we're just gonna kind of drizzle things out on the table and just kind of see how these colors are gonna interact. This will tell us how our bullfrog's gonna look. You know, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think the I think the uh, the brown and the watermelon uh, work well together. They don't really, I, I think the brown is still a little bit thicker, so we might add a little bit more saturation to the, uh, to the middle color, and then maybe slightly more pigment to the white, but that is exactly what I wanted to see. To me, that is like textbook bullfrog color, um, and I think it's gonna look really, really good in a triple laminate. All right, we're gonna try it. Here we go. Wish me luck, because we might need it. It has been a minute since I have hopped on the triple injector, and it is unforgiving. Here we go. One down. Two down. Three down. You know, we may have run out of plastic on that last mold, which when doing triple injection is a major boo-boo because that's plastic that I can't get back. So that may have been a huge waste. You know, I do have to say the colors look amazing here on the injector tips. Like, I, I have a lot of confidence that this will look good. It may not be perfect, and it never is the first time Especially with triple injection because there's I mean you three colors have to look good and work in harmony But I really really like what I'm seeing now. That's a good looking triple block right there Looking good looking good I Don't know the moment of truth is coming up next. All right. Let's see how we did drum roll, please I miss playing drums. This is about all the action I ever get. Ooh. Okay, right off the bat, the browns and that green is perfect. That is absolutely everything I wanted it to be. Wow. It reminds me a lot of the Zoom Bullfrog color in the Horny Toad if it were just those two colors. But we have the triple. Oh my God, look at those white bellies. Okay, okay. I'm excited, I'm excited. I have not, you know, made fancy frogs. We're just gonna call these fancy frogs. I have not made fancy frogs, triple frogs in a long time. Like normally, whenever I go hit the lake, I'm just throwing June bug, you know, maybe some watermelon red. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, yes. And I love how an asymmetrical bait cavity, right, does not laminate com completely perfectly. It's, it's an asymmetrical, or asymmetrical, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Nothing is perfect about the way that a bait cavity shaped like a frog is going to laminate. And just to demonstrate, we did run out of plastic on the other frog mold, but here's how that one came out too. 
again not perfect but those colors are just bled in there in such a nice way check it out that's a freaking bullfrog color right there i i'm not going to change a thing we're just going to try to make another run of these try to get at least one full run and this one came out okay but there's a little bit of air pocket there in the nose where I just didn't have enough plastic in the mold. So if you ever get air pockets in the front of a bait, it's because the runner ran out of plastic to draw from. That's why it's always important to top off your sprue openings once you fill your molds. That right there is an absolute winner. Let's look at the other ones. I might take these fishing soon. I might take these fishing soon because I, I, I get excited about frog fishing around Tallahassee. That's for sure. Oh yeah. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that's a good bullfrog? Would you throw it? What would you change? Leave me some comments down below and, uh, and tell me what you think. I'm absolutely in love. I, I can't believe it turned out that good on the first run. All right, a little wide angle view. Ran out again. Figured I would try it. That is a okay though. Got two full molds here. Again, it's important to top off the sprues just like that. A lot of times you have plastic left over in your injector, right? And then you would just squirt out of the injector to top off the sprue openings. You know, in this case, we kind of ran out of plastic, so there was no more plastic. So then you just put your hand pouring skills to the test and you just pour right into the sprue opening and that allows that runner to hold enough plastic for that cavity to draw in and then you should not have those air pockets. I must say y'all, I'm in love. I think anybody with a frog mold or even a creature or craw mold and hell, even a Cinco mold, stickworm mold should try this if you, if you have a triple injector. Um, I mean, this is so incredibly natural. Like these are real colors, you know, that, that you find in nature, uh, particularly in a bullfrog. So yeah, I think that's a good recipe to build on. Uh, so I would love to see some of y'all at home try this. You know, a lot of people have this mold. A lot of people have, um, you know, a creature mold, um, you know, crawl molds and things like that. I think this right here is going to be a knockout in any of those molds any of those situations i think this one's going to really shine so yeah there there again that right there is the angling ai molds atomic toad has this little ridge right there to really put that hook point in that way there's a lot of material there to keep things weedless beautiful beautiful bait i love the feed on it again this one right here is a custom i've been uh i've been rolling with this one since about 2013 now let's rig one of these beauties up just to kind of show you the final result there. So uh, this is just a wide gap weightless swim bait hook really um, with you know you can see the spring in the nose to me that is uh, very very important you can see I left a really wide nose on my mold design for this purpose right here so that it can really absorb a spring in the nose okay so all the way in there yeah nice little hook slot in the bottom okay so it's gonna go pretty far back out the top skin hook it and boom that right there is ready for action yes a little triple laminate bullfrog color That right there is a bass catching machine. Love it, love it, love it. There it is.
Now, if only I could just get on the water. Yeah, not a bad spread there. That's what we were able to get. And uh, we have a little bit of plastic left over. Not really enough of each color to do a whole lot with. You know, that's kind of, I guess, one of the downfalls of, of the triple injection system is uh, you really, really are not as efficient with your plastic, I don't think. But, I mean, look at the effects. Totally worth it. The Princess Bride, one of the greatest, dumbest movies of all time. All right, that's going to wrap this up. We are back inside with the uh, AC blowing cold. Uh, you know, luckily today, um, we had a little bit of fall in the air. So I think that's uh, always a good sign here in hot, sunny Florida. We welcome the cold air, at least I do. It'll be about another month before we have, you know, what I would consider cold days. But, um, yeah, by, by Florida standard, anything below 80 degrees is like <sighs> breath of fresh air. So, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, those frogs are awesome. I will 100% be taking those uh, to Lake Iamonia with me next time I go. So, uh, should I get a fish catch on those, I will definitely post up some pictures so that everyone can see. Uh, I think that's a great color. Would love to see some other people try it. Um, and then be on the lookout for those jets and texture eyes. Uh, if you're a bait maker that makes, uh, you know, swim baits or hard baits or anything that needs lure eyes, those are going to take your creations to the next freaking level. I mean, they are just like when you see them in person. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, appreciate y'all being here today. Everybody stay safe out there and uh, we will see you in the next video. Ending this video right.